Hello everyone and welcome. I want to start off by saying that I seriously debated posting this video. This is due to me making a couple rather serious mistakes in the process of painting this piece. I decided to post it anyway because I felt it was mm, kind of part of my journey to become an artist or something like that. You know, you have your ups and your downs, and this was kind of one of those challenging downs. And, you know, you try and power through them, and you do. You get through them. <laughs> and I, I made it through. I survived. I started off with a sketch that I quite liked, and its concept and execution are simple, but I liked them, you know? Even the inking went okay. There were no serious issues there. I was going for a, mm, a somewhat clean, graphic approach. I wanted there to be a nice contrast between the lines on the outside of the figure and the ones on the inside. I'm using Sakura Pigma Microns, and the sizes that I chose were 08 for the outside lines and 05 and 03 for the inside. Mostly 03 on the inside, I think. One of the first mistakes I made was basically decide before I even started sketching. Well, it was when I put that pencil to that paper. That paper being Canson Mixed Media Excel Pad. <laughs> I like this sketchbook and I've been working a while on filling it and I find that it works well for most mediums. But not watercolor. <laughs> I really don't like using watercolor in it, and I knew this before I started sketching in it, but for some reason, I just started sketching in it even though I knew that I was intending to paint this piece. This makes no sense, and it was a silly decision on my part, which I regretted when I got to the painting portion. <laughs> The paper, as I said, is quite nice, and most of the time is enjoyable to use. But when I try and paint on it, it just seems to dry so fast that you like start a stroke and the start of it is dry by the time you get to the end of it. Which, that's slightly exaggerated, but that's the feeling <laughs> that I get when I use it. This, coupled with my mm, some uh, an inexperience with watercolor, made this piece difficult to paint, a real challenge, and it didn't turn out how I would have liked it to. Here I am starting to do the actual painting. And her skin tone, the color I mixed, is okay. It could be better, but it's, it's alright. But you can see that it's streaky, and I'm actually trying to move quite speedily, <laughs> because I knew it was an issue. I hesitated a long time before putting brush to paper, because I was like, this, this is going to be a race, because this paper, it likes to dry. <laughs> was one thing that was frustrating while I painted is the mistakes I made because of how fast I was trying to paint. I felt bad because it was like I could avoid going outside the lines and so forth and so on if I wasn't trying to paint with such speed. And it was like it's partially the paper's fault and partially me being silly and choosing to 
work on this paper anyway. <laughs> Despite having such difficulty, I still somewhat liked how the piece came out. She didn't really have the colors I wanted, which was the other mistake that I made. I generally choose colors in a not so technical way. I start with one color that I really like and build from there with about three to five other colors. But for some reason, I just couldn't find a group of colors that I liked for this lady. She, I wanted her to be lighter overall and, hmm, not maybe, well, I don't know if I wanted pastels, but maybe something close to that. And that's not what I ended up with at all. I liked the colors, but I'm not sure they went together all that well. Someday in the future, I would like to redo this piece and really try and improve upon it because I know it could be better and I know I could... <laughs> I know I could do better and I would, yeah, someday soon I will try that. Well, maybe not soon soon. I need a break from watercolor for a bit. <laughs> I think I will be working with markers for a while and then come back to watercolor on different paper for sure. <laughs> The paints that I'm using are um, Windsor and Newton Cotman for the most part. Then I use quite a bit of, um, let's see, Daniel Smith fine watercolors. I have four little tubes and uh, those are such nice watercolors. So I tend to use them probably more than I should. It's I should branch out to other colors. <laughs> The hair is where it's most noticeable that I couldn't get even washes of color. It's kind of painful to watch, honestly. <laughs> ah. I tried different techniques like laying down water first to try and... Ugh, give myself a step towards that even wash that I was going for, but it didn't really seem to help that much. It just ended up making the water buckle more, and it still seemed to dry quite speedily, which was kind of baffling, honestly. That is one thing that this piece taught me was the limits of this paper, or at least when I use the paper. And I just need to remember these limits for next time and kind of respect them, so to speak, and not be like, oh, I can do it anyway, and be rather unrealistic in that regard. I tried to do layers of color to add more depth to her face, and I started with her lips, and uh, I should have done it when the paint was dry, I mean when the paint was wet, but uh, I knew I wouldn't be able to and I knew I would have to try doing wet on dry, which uh, I don't even know if you're supposed to do that. Not in like this, where you want a very subtle gradient and 
not have um, noticeable edges between the color changes. But because the paint dries so fast, I knew I would probably end up doing that, so I was like, it's, um, it's an experiment, and I'll see how it goes, you know? Part of this was me making a, some silly mistakes, and then part of me being like, I want to experiment and try new things, and learn some more on watercolors. Ah, uh, here is blushing. This did not go well. This was um, uh, a failed experiment in that it didn't turn out well. <laughs> it was a success in that I learned not to do this sort of thing. I keep tinkering with that blush and I'm, I just want to yell at myself and say, Stop! It's not gonna get better! You just need to give up and move on! And I eventually do. One thing that I liked was the coloring of her eyes. Painting eyes, I generally find to be quite... Uh, Kind of restful and fun and that color is one of my favorites it's um, one of the Daniel Smith fine watercolors I think it's like moon glow or something like that it's just such a beautiful purple color. Oh, I have, actually, with that gray, which was actually um, a mix of most of the other colors I used, or at least there were little bits of the other colors in it to make it the gray that it is. That was kind of fun. It turned out to be a, a nice gray with some interesting depth. that, well, that I enjoyed <laughs> with, and it's always nice. I got out my metallic watercolors to help, well, to attempt saving this piece from uh, what it had become. <laughs> also highlights, of course. I think they did help in making the piece feel a bit more alive. And not quite so mm, flat. She just, yeah, she can come across as a little bit flat, but the highlights really did help. I also um, fixed her eye shapes with the white gel pen because ugh, I wasn't careful enough when putting her skin tone in that area, painting because once again, the paint dries fast. <laughs> I might have gone a little overboard with the highlights, but it was kind of fun, and at that point, I was a little worn out. I was like, ah, this is nice and smooth, and they look so clean. adding them basically everywhere. All of her is a little bit glistening, so to speak. <laughs> oh, and there's my color comps. And that's just about it. 
thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my interesting little adventure in watercoloring. <laughs>